Well, alien robots in space all seem so unreal and feel like we live in some supernatural world when we listen about what NASA and other space agencies are doing in space. Did you hear that? NASA will be searching for aliens on planets. Other lives on other planets might seem unreal and hard to imagine, but don't you also sometimes feel like Earth? Other planets might also have some or other kind of life. Well, who knows that yet? But the way these space agencies are determined to find answers to such questions, we might get to know something or other from the other planets. Well, welcome back to Beyond Unknown, you all. Today we will talk about all about planets and space. If you're a science freak and love space and want to know what all is happening and what initiatives are taken by these agencies, you're at the right place. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. To begin with, let's know a bit about Sensing with Independent Micro Swimmers Swim. In this concept, hundreds of little robots would drop through the frozen shell of a distant moon through a robot, which is depicted on the left. Once there, they would make their way down to the water below. The NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program has agreed to provide financial support for the research. A swarm of robots the size of mobile phones might one day search for indications of extraterrestrial life in the ocean that lies beneath the mile-thick ice crust of Jupiter's moon Europa or Saturn's moon Enceladus. After being encased in a thin ice-melting probe that would burrow through the icy crust, the little robots would be released underwater and tasked with swimming away from their mothership to get an accurate reading of a new world. This is the goal that Ethan Shaler, a robotics mechanical engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, has in mind. Shaler's concept, titled Sensing with Independent Microswimmers, was recently given $600,000 in Phase II funding by the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. This money, which comes after he was granted $125,000 in Phase I NIAC funding in 2021 to investigate feasibility and design possibilities, will enable him and his team to construct and test 3D printed prototypes over the following two years. The fact that Schaller's mini swimmers would be significantly smaller than prior proposals for planetary ocean research robots is a significant breakthrough. This would make it possible to carry a large number of them into a tight space within an ice probe. They would expand the scientific capabilities of the probe and could make it more likely to find signs of life while determining whether or not an ocean-bearing distant celestial world is potentially habitable. My thought is this. How can we take miniature robotics and use them in exciting new ways to investigate our solar system? Schaller stated. We can enhance our measurements and explore a considerably bigger volume of ocean water with the help of a swarm of small swimming robots. This allows us to improve our measurements since we have many robots gathering data in the same location. This picture depicts a NASA cryobot idea dubbed Probe Utilizing Radioisotopes for Icy Moons Exploration, which shows a lander on the frozen surface of an ocean planet launching small robots in the shape of wedges into the ocean kilometers below the lander, the NASA JPL Caltech credit system. The early stage swim idea involves wedge-shaped robots, each around 5 inches long and roughly 3 to 5 cubic inches in capacity. This concept is not yet part of any NASA mission. About 40 of them could fit in a segment of a cryobot that was 4 inches long, taking up just about 15% of the volume of the research payload. The cryobot had a diameter of 10 inches. That would free up a lot of space for scientific instruments that were more powerful but less mobile, and they would be able to collect data during the long voyage through the ice and offer stationary readings once they reach the ocean. When it reaches Jupiter's moon in 2030, the Europa Clipper mission, whose launch is scheduled for the year 2024, will start the collection of in-depth scientific data during several flybys using a comprehensive set of equipment. Cryobot concepts to investigate such ocean worlds are currently being developed through NASA's Scientific Exploration Subsurface Access Mechanism for Europa program, as well as through other NASA technology development programs. This development is taking place with an eye toward the further future. The SWIM concept is an ambitious one, but its goal would be to decrease danger while simultaneously advancing scientific knowledge. The cryobot would be connected to the surface-based lander utilizing a communications cable, and the lander would, in turn, serve as the point of contact with mission controllers located on Earth. Because of this tethered method and the restricted capacity available for the inclusion of a big propulsion engine, it is quite likely that the cryobot will be unable to travel much further than the point where the ice meets the water. What if, after all those years it took to get into an ocean, you come through the ice shell at the incorrect place? What if is a rhetorical question that asks, What if? Scientist Samuel Howell of JPL's swim team, who also works on Europa Clipper, 
posed the question, what if there are signals of life over there but not where you entered the ocean? If we brought along these swarms of robots, we would be able to gaze over there to examine considerably more of our surroundings than a single cryobot would permit. Howell likened the idea to NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter, which is a flying companion to the agency's Perseverance rover that is now operating on Mars. The helicopter expands the reach of the rover, and the photographs it is sending back provide context to assist the rover understand how to explore its environment, he added. The images it is sending back are also helping the rover understand how to navigate its surroundings. If you had several helicopters, rather than just one, you would have a far better understanding of the surrounding area. That is the core concept of SWIM. The cryobot's blazing hot nuclear battery, on which the probe would rely to melt a downward route through the ice, would not have to be near SWIM to collect data. This would be possible thanks to SWIM. Schaller explained that once the heat from the battery was released into the ocean, it would produce a thermal bubble, which would slowly melt the ice above it and perhaps cause reactions that may affect the chemistry of the water. In addition, the SWIM robots could flock together in a manner that was modeled like the behavior of fish or birds. This allowed for the reduction of mistakes in the data as a result of their overlapping measurements. These group data may also reveal gradients, such as an increase in temperature or salinity as it moves across the swarm's collective sensors, which would suggest the direction of the source of the signal that these sensors are detecting. Life can start developing if there are gradients of energy or chemicals in the environment. To detect those, we would have to move upstream from the cryobot, Schaller explained. Along with straightforward sensors for temperature, salinity, acidity, and pressure, each robot would also be equipped with its propulsion engine, onboard computer, and ultrasonic communication system. The Phase II research that Schaller is doing will include the use of chemical sensors to look for biomarkers, sometimes known as signs of life. Well, let's get more information regarding the NIAC. The NASA Space Technology Mission Directorate, which is also in charge of creating the new cross-cutting technologies and capabilities required by the agency, is the organization that provides funding for the NIAC. The initiative encourages exploration by providing funds for preliminary research to examine technologies that could one day be used to support future endeavors in aeronautics and space travel. Researchers working in academia, business, or the U.S. government who have ideas that have the potential to have a significant effect can submit applications. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope to see you soon when we get new information or updates regarding. So do give this video a thumbs up and stay with us in the next video. All you need to do is subscribe to our channel so we stay just a notification away from you. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you in our next video. Goodbye.